Hello again, this is Kyle. Let's write some code. Today let's talk about JavaScript arrays and not all the boring, in-depth, crazy stuff, but just the super good stuff that uh, you know I use uh, quite often and every day. Let's just focus on that today. Uh, so uh, an array, if you don't know, is just basically a list of things. Uh, you can create an array with uh, two brackets. And in within those brackets, uh, you can put whatever you want. So let's create a variable here and assign it to our array here. And you can put whatever you want in the brackets. You can put a number, uh, you can put a string in there. You can put an object uh, such as type equals true. You can even put other arrays that have other items in it. It's just a, a list of things that you can access. Um, so, for instance, if you want to access this object literal here, this is on, uh, so if you start here, the, the array starts at zero, and then we move here to the one position, we move here to the two position. So if we wanted to print out the third item in the array, we can just say list, and we'll use two to reference the zero, one, two uh, object literal here, and we can put dot type to uh, log out what dot type equals here. And as you see, we get uh, the value true that we've entered here. Now, if we just want to go through the entire array and list everything out, we can use dot for each on this array, and then we'll supply it a callback here with each item uh, within that array. And so this will just go through each item that we have, and uh, we'll console log it out. And you can see here we get a uh, it in our console of each item in our array, including the other array that we have uh, in nested itself. So if you need to add an item to the uh, end of the array, uh, use dot push. So we can say at the end, and when we save that, you'll see we have a new item at the end of our array. Uh, and if you want to add an item to the beginning, we use dot unshift at the beginning. There we go. And we save, and you'll see that it pushes or it, it unshifts it onto the beginning. Now, if you want to do the opposite, uh, use, uh, like, if you want to grab the last item off the list, uh, so we'll say last item here, we'll say list.pop, and this will pop off the last item, and as you can see here, this will give us that last item at the end. And then if you want to remove the, uh, the first item, so we'll just change this to first item, list.shift will give us the first item off that array. And so when we save this, you'll see we now get the at the beginning uh, that we have uh, unshifted onto it. Okay, but this array is super boring and it's not related to bears, so let's fix that here. Uh, I'm going to create a new array called bears. And we're going to add some bears to it. Grizzly, polar, and brown. Um, these will be our bears. Uh, so now, maybe I want to go through each of these bears and transform them or turn them into something else. Um, so like right now, each of these bears are strings, but maybe I want to turn them into li tags. Um, and so to do that, I can use map. And so map will go through each item in the array and uh, allow you to return a new item um, based on that one. So bear will first equal the string. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a, um, an li tag here. So let's say document create element li. Um, and then we'll say li text content. And the text content is going to equal the string of bear. And so then as soon as we return this li, it's going to change this item in the array um, to be our, our elements, um, our li elements here. And so now if I console log out um, the bears that we've transformed, uh, you can see I get three uh, li tags instead of strings. So instead of console logging out our bears, let's go through and uh, append them to our, our DOM uh, using for each. Uh, so we say bear, and each of these will be an element. And uh, let's create a UL tag, document, create element. And we'll uh, document body, append it, pin this child to our body. And so then we'll go through um, the bears array here and each bear element will append to this UL. 
And so there we get a, a nicer looking list to, to look at and debug. And so the first thing is maybe we don't like polar bears. Uh, maybe we just want to go through and as, as we're going through the array, we want to remove anything that's a polar bear. Um, and so to do that, we can use filter. Uh, so we'll say bears.filter and it uses the same uh, kind of signature as a map here. Um, and so what it's going to do, it's going to go through each item in the array and then we're going to return true or false uh, based on whether we want to include that in the array or exclude it from the array. And so we can simply say if uh, bear uh, equals polar uh, return false. So if it's a polar bear, we're going to return false. Otherwise, for everything else, we're going to return true. And so this will filter our array before it does the map here. And so you can see that the, uh, the polar bear is gone. So we can simplify this. Uh, so we can say return if bear does not equal polar. And uh, it, it's going to return true for bears that don't equal polar. And it's going to return false for uh, a bear uh, that does equal polar. Uh, and that gives us the same thing. Uh, and then we can further simplify this by chaining uh, these. So instead of doing these extra calls here to bear, we can simply call filter first on bears, and then that will return the bears itself. And so we can chain the map and call map directly after. Um, and so first it's going to filter, and then it's going to map and give us our, uh, our complete list of bears uh, to print out here. So another really great uh, array method, and that's very underused, is reduce. And reduce will go through our array and compare itself to the last item in the array, and it boils the array down to a single number. So, for instance, if we wanted to get, we wanted to find the longest bear here out of our list of bears, uh, we can do bears dot reduce, and we give it a call back here. And now, so the the first one is going to be the previous one, uh, the previous item in the array, and then the other one is going to be the next item in the array. Um, and so we can use this to compare. So this third parameter, this is the first one. Since you know when we come across the first item in the array, we're not going to have anything to compare to. So we can provide a third parameter here uh, to compare to. So say we like you know super short bear, we just have a, a string here. Uh, now I'm just going to use null because we really don't care um, what it is. I know default to null, so I can just leave that out there. Um, but what I can do is I can say if uh, next, the next bear in the list is greater than the previous one, the one that we currently have uh, available, we'll return next. So we know that the next bear, the, the next bear in the list is, is bigger than the previous one that we've, we've determined. And so let's use that one instead. Uh, but otherwise, if it's not the biggest or the longest bear, we're just going to return the one we have previous here. And so then when we log out, uh, our longest bear here. You can see we get the grizzly bear because that is the the longest named bear in it. So reduce is really great if you want to uh, boil down an array into a single value uh, that based on your, your function that you supplied that represents that array. So speaking of removing items from an array, we can use uh, slice to remove out sections of uh, our bears array here. So for instance, if we wanted um, the first two items from the bears array, we can do slice 0, 2. Um, and we'll console log that out, first two. You can see we get the first two items of our, our, our bears array. And then if we wanted the last two items, uh, we can start, you can use negative numbers. And so it's, what it's going to do is going to start from uh, negative one, negative two. So it's going to start from here. And then if you don't supply a second parameter to slice, it's going to go all the way to the end of the array. So if we just do uh, slice two here, um, we can do, we get the last two items uh, in the array, as you see polar and brown here. So maybe you just want to straight out delete an item from the array. Um, so we'll go here and we'll console log out our bears so we get a representation of them. And maybe you've seen this keyword, the delete keyword, and you think that's a good idea. So like we know the index here, we know it's 0, uh, 1, 2, and we want to delete polar here. And so we just say delete bears 1 here to remove that item. Unfortunately, it does delete it, but it actually sets it to undefined, which the length of your array, so if we do bears.length, uh, you'll notice is still three. It's not two. So it didn't actually remove the item from the array. It rather just set it to undefined, and that's not good. That's not what we want. It's not usually what we want. So instead of doing delete, we're going to use a function called splice. 
So say bears.splice. Now the first item uh, that it wants is the index. And so since we want to remove polar, uh, we'll give it the index of one. And then you need to specify how many you want to remove. And so we only want to remove this one, so we'll just provide it a one there. And so now when we save here, you'll see that our array length is now two, just as we expected. And it has in fact um, deleted polar uh, from our list of arrays. And the same thing, so if you know if we wanted to check this and say two, if it removes brown, it removed brown, or maybe at the one index position, but we want to remove two of the, uh, the things, you'll see that we just get grizzly. Um, now, what if you don't even know that, uh, you just want to find polar here, you don't know the index, you don't know this could be over here, polar can be the third item, it can be the hundredth item, it can be whatever item, uh, and you want to find that index. Uh, and so what you can do is do bear.index of, and you supply the key that you want to find. And what this will do is it'll return negative one if the, this uh, string is not found in the array anywhere. Or if it's found, it will return the actual index of it, and in this case, it will be one. And so you can see here, we found uh, the index of the string polar, which is one, and we have spliced it out of our array, giving us the array, um, the proper array that we want here. So there are a lot more ways to modify an array. Uh, what I've demonstrated here is just mostly the, the common ways. And so if you found this video helpful, then uh, please share it. I would appreciate that. And if you want to see more videos, please subscribe. Thanks again for watching. Thank you.